I'm John Daniels at ASI. Today I'm going to show you how to take apart the top part of your DI spin to send back if you're getting that upgraded. So important tools you'll need. Um, you'll need a hex key set. So specifically I think we're going to use the one and a half, two, two and a half, and a six millimeter hex. Uh, you'll need a small Phillips and regular screwdriver. You'll need some masking tape or something similar to cover up the, uh, the optical path of your microscope to protect it during shipping. You'll keep your objective, so hopefully you have your uh, little objective jars still to store those. And then you should have some materials that we send you for boxing um, as like, the foam padding that cut out for the DI spin head. So hopefully you'll have that and um, maybe a few padded bags like this uh, that you get from us. So first step, of course, is to gather your materials and um, then we'll actually start taking things apart. All right, so the first step in taking it apart is actually to remove the objectives. And this step is the same if you're gonna remove the objectives for cleaning or exchanging. Now, if you're sending your system back to us, it probably means you have the old type of of piezos which don't just slide out like the new ones do. So uh, the best way to take the objectives off is first to remove this whole upper spim arm. So there's some screws right here on the back side and then right here. They're all on this little uh, ring that sits right there. So we're just going to loosen these set screws and then this whole arm pops off like that and you can just set it aside somewhere somewhere safe um, but you can just set it aside I guess I should note that I already removed the fibers uh, fiber optic cables and the connectors from the scanners so that's the first step in removing the, the objectives the next step is to actually uh, loosen this piezo from this uh, from this plate right here so to do that, you need a two and a half millimeter wrench. And there's four screws right here that I'm loosening. You don't actually have to take them all the way off. If you just loosen them enough, the, this whole piece will kind of sag down enough so that you can easily get at the objectives. So I just loosen them a, you know, a few millimeters. And now there should be enough room to, uh, to go ahead and unscrew the objective. You can just leave the bushing in place, but you should now be able to just easily unscrew the objective and, um, and set it aside. And now you can do the other objective. So now with the objectives gone, you can go ahead and replace the spim arm that we took off beforehand. So just reverse the, the steps, first tighten these screws to bring the piezo back into place. And then you can set this whole thing back on the ring. If you have a, unless you have a super, super old system, you'll at least have this, uh, this dowel pin that supports the, kind of holds it in place while you tighten these three set screws. All right, so now we've removed the objectives and we're, uh, we're ready to, for the next step. All right, so the next step is to take off the cameras and the scanners from your microscope. So the cameras are the easiest part. Um, there's the set screw right here, unless you, you know, unless you have a really old system. It allows you to slide the whole tube lens off like that. And Really, if you're sending it back for exchange, you're fine to keep your, your tube lens on the camera. So uh, if you want to send it back for whatever reason, you can, but there's no need to. So just set that aside and you should uh, put some masking tape or something over the, the tube lens to protect, um, protect the lens from getting scratched or getting dust. So we will do that on both sides. If, by the way, if you have a, an older system, then you'll have to remove the camera by loosening these three set screws. So there's one down here, one here, one here. I'll just do that up for this side. 
You could also just unscrew the camera from the C-mount, but it's generally easiest to leave the, the C-mount um, intact. All right. There we go. So the camera just comes off like that. And again, you'd want to put some masking tape or uh, something over here just to keep dust out. All right, so now the cameras are off, and we'll take off the scanners. Again, you, there's a few different ways of doing this. You can take off the scanner right here at the C-mount by just rotating it around now that the camera is gone. That's one way of doing it. Um, alternatively, you can, again, loosen the three set screws here, down here, and right there. And take off the C-mount adapter along with the scanner. So now the scanners and the cameras are off. Like I mentioned, it doesn't matter if you send the two lenses back to us or not. We're not going to do anything with it, but if it's easiest to leave them attached, um, the packing materials allow for that. So just for example, I'll just take off this tube lens, and I'll show you if you want to take off these tube lenses that are attached to the cubes. There's set screws here, underneath, and right there. Um, it's a little bit of a pain to get to the bottom one. So um, from that fact alone, why don't we, uh, at least for this video, I'm just going to leave this, uh, these tube lenses attached. So before actually putting, uh, before taking it off, we're going to tape up all the open holes. So here's some, some masking tape. And you just want to tape up all the open holes, so tape up two lenses. And you want to tape up this opening right here. Same thing right over here. And then finally the uh, location where the objectives go. I know I said before that it's okay to ship the tube lenses back to ASI. It doesn't matter whether or not you keep them. Unfortunately, if you do keep the tube lenses on there, then you need to make sure to lower the LS50 a little bit more than this so that the tube lenses will fit into the packaging. So um, the, this uh, upper, the upper Z drive or this LS50, the position should probably be kind of halfway, but, or just a little bit above where you would do for imaging. Or the easy, feel, the foolproof thing to do is go ahead and remove your tube lenses and just keep them. So when you do that, um, there's just three screws, right? Three set screws around here. And besides the tube lens, on most systems, there's also a 15 millimeter spacer right here. I'll show you once I get the tube lens off. So that spacer, go ahead and send that spacer back to us and we'll replace it with a newer version that's Instead of 15 millimeters, it's slightly shorter. All right, and this one down here is kind of a, can be a pain to get to. I can barely get to it here. So just keep your tube lens, and then this um, this 15 millimeter spacer. Go ahead and send that back to us, like I said, and we'll replace it with a slightly shorter one that slightly improves the the light sheet. So we want to tape up the objective holes as well. You can go ahead and leave the bushings on there and send those back to us. We'll replace them with the, the new style bushings, but the old style bushings are still um, useful for other applications, so send them back to us. Cover these all up. Now, you'll ha you probably have mirrors and um, cubes with a dichroic filter in here. I would recommend uh, keeping those, not sending them back. So here's this one. It has an emission filter and dichroic, so just use the um, use an M2 to take loosen this loosen the set screw and the eccentric tip screw enough to slide that off and just keep this part, keep the D cube. This part you can go ahead and, uh, and send back to us. And just when you do, 
it's easiest if you go ahead and um, loosen these all the way or back them off so that it's as tight as possible and then just tighten the, tighten the thumb screws down. Just to keep everything in place. And same thing here, if you have a mirror, uh, no point in chipping that back and forth. So you can just take it off. Slides right off and just set it aside and put it in a, a bag or something like that where it won't get dust on it. We attach the thumb screws. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. So if you do need to ship the, the filters and the mirrors back to us, they can be left in there, but like this, this one you can see this, hopefully you can see this mirror. It's been chipped probably because it actually got shipped in there. Um, so it's best to take them out and just put them in a separate box for shipping. All right, so before we go further and actually take the DI spin head off the, the RAM frame, let's go ahead and disconnect the piezos from the, the cards in the Tiger controller. So you'll have a controller that looks like this. Uh, you'll have most likely two cards for the two piezos. And since we're going to be, uh, well, if we are replacing your piezos, then we need to replace the cards inside here too, because there's some a little bit of calibration data that's specific to each piezo that is stored on the card. So if that's the case, you'll want to actually remove the whole card from the controller. Uh, so there's four Phillips head screws. Here, right here, here, and right here. And once you've done this, the whole card will just pop right out of the controller. Usually it's kind of hard to find a handle to grab onto, though, so um, if, you're, uh, if this cable is connected, you can literally just firmly grasp that and pull it out like that. Um, you're not doing any harm. If you if for some reason this is already disconnected, you can just grab a BNC cable, connect it there, and pull. So you'll just take the whole card out like that, and then at this point you can disconnect the, uh, the piezo cable itself. And this is just a regular screwdriver on these screws right here. So if, uh, if you're not having your piezos upgraded, if you're keeping the same piezos and just having them modified, then we really don't need the, the cards back. But if you're getting brand new, uh, brand new piezos, we need this card and we should provide you some material, some you know, just bubble wrap basically that, uh, that this can go into for shipping back. So you just repeat that process with the other card. All right, so now we're ready to take the whole DI spin assembly off of the microscope and put it into the shipping box. So just to remind you things we've done, we've um, taken off the scanners and cameras, whether or not you leave the two lenses attached is up to you. We've covered with masking tape or something similar all the openings. We went ahead and removed the, the filters and the mirrors from all four of the cubes. And I guess at the very beginning, we removed the objectives as well. Uh, then we freed up the ends of the, of the piezo cables so that uh, these cables can just kind of be gathered and just stuck right on top here of the microscope, or the, of the spin head, just so they don't get caught as we're lifting things off. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to lift this entire assembly up and put it into the packaging material that you should have received. So there are two foam pieces, one that looks like this, and one that sits down in the box looks like this, and it accommodates the, uh, this back arm 
and then this is just space for the tube lenses to go down in. So to take this off, you just, there's two bolts here and here that it's a six millimeter Allen wrench. So this is just the reverse of the, uh, the assembly process. And just loosen that one. And loosen this one. remove these two bolts and so this whole head is is just kind of resting by gravity on these four dowel pins but you should be able to just slide it straight off like this and this is about 25 pounds or so maybe 20 pounds so um, just be ready to catch it but it's it's manageable and then you just want to make sure that the uh, four dowel pins stay in your microscope um, so this can just go get set down in the box. Move the cords out of the way. And just fit right down in there. And then the final step is to go ahead and take this piece. So you'll be left with your, um, your RAM frame, and you can go ahead and just put these bolts back on and put some tape over this just to keep anything from getting lost, if you like. Um, you will keep your objectives, keep your cameras, and keep the, the mirrors and the, the filter cube, so the, the D cube, the part that goes inside the outer cube. Now, if you, um, if you want to send back your scanners, it's probably not a bad idea. We'll go ahead and make sure they're nicely aligned. We're getting much better at aligning them before we ship them and gluing, them, gluing everything into place. So if, you, um, if you're getting the P's of upgrade done, chances are you probably have scanners that are old enough that that wasn't done, but we're happy to do it for free. So just send, you can send your scanners back. And it doesn't matter if you send this C-mount adapter or not. It's easy enough to uh, just unscrew it. And again, if you send back your scanners, please just go ahead and put a piece of masking tape over that hole to keep dust out. And then finally, you'll want to send back your piezo cards if you're getting a piezo upgrade and you're, you're Welcome to send it back even if you're not, um, but go ahead and uh, send those two cards back to us as well. So please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions, and hopefully this was instructive.